If you are a traditional artist who is getting into digital art, but you don't feel like you're having much success working on a computer, this video is for you. I'm Aaron Rutten, and today I'll share some tips for how to be as good at digital art as you are at traditional art. First, I know it seems like digital art and traditional art are quite similar, but they are two different disciplines. However, there is a lot of overlap, and if you can make art, you can do it using just about any medium. But don't expect to be instantly good at digital art. Aside from making art, there is a lot to learn about the technical aspects of producing art on a computer, as well as the hardware and software involved. Just like it took time to learn how to make art traditionally, you'll need to invest some time into learning digital art as well. Fortunately, you're not starting at zero. If you have some background in art, you have an advantage over everyone else who's starting from scratch. It's important to let go of the idea that digital art is easier to create than traditional art. If it were, then I wouldn't be making this video and you wouldn't be here watching it. If you go into it thinking digital art is inherently easier, you're going to have a very frustrating experience. There are elements to digital art that are more convenient, but the same can be said about traditional art. Both have their strengths and weaknesses. A lot of your frustration might be caused by some of the tasks that were easier to do traditionally, but are very difficult to achieve digitally. For example, the randomness in brush strokes. With a traditional brush, you can make dynamic strokes in various shapes, sizes, and opacities, but if you try to replicate that digitally, the brushes are going to feel very rigid and the strokes repetitive. You'll need to develop an understanding of what the limitations are to digital art, and perhaps set your expectations a bit lower. No matter how sophisticated it gets, digital art is never going to look or feel exactly the same as traditional art. A lot of what makes digital art hard to pick up is that it involves a certain level of computer proficiency. You need to have a good grasp on operating a computer, saving and loading files, and you need a computer that is powerful enough to handle art software. If you are new to computers, it may be worth taking a step back first to watch some basic computer courses, or just familiarize yourself with working on a computer. The next tip I have for you is to use the right hardware to make digital art. You can make art on a variety of devices, from phones to tablets to computers, but it doesn't mean all devices are equal. Because I have so many videos about how to choose the right tablet for digital art, I won't say too much about it here, but I will summarize a few key considerations. First, you need a tablet that supports pen pressure. A mouse, touch, or even a passive stylus are not going to cut it. Without pressure sensitivity, it won't feel natural to draw. You'll be missing out on a lot of the expressions like opacity and grain that make your art look natural, and your work will look very flat without any variation in the strokes. Tablet size is also very important, because if you're accustomed to working on large canvases or sheets of paper, then your gestures will feel very confined if limited to a sketchbook size tablet. Though they can be expensive, it would be best to get a very large drawing tablet so that you can draw more freely. Another consideration is whether the tablet has a built-in display. Display tablets are much easier to draw on compared to the other kind, which require you to look at a display that is separate from where you're drawing. That alone accounts for a lot of the frustration you will encounter while trying digital art. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is choosing a tablet that creates poor quality lines that are jittery or do not respond well to pen pressure. If you bought one of these tablets, you might give up on digital art thinking you just don't have a steady enough hand for it. Wacom is the brand I recommend if you don't want to deal with those issues. And last, tilt and rotation are not essential, but they are very useful features to have if you want a traditional look and feel. Only certain Wacom tablets support rotation, and you'll need the Wacom Art Pen and an application that supports rotation. Rotation allows you to rotate the barrel of your pen to rotate a flat dab. This is similar to how you would work with a flat bristle brush or palette knife. Rotation is incredibly useful for making digital art that looks and feels more traditional. It's one of the most underrated features in digital art. Tilt is a more commonly supported feature, but not all tablets can support it. Tilt can be used to widen your stroke like you would when you draw with the side of a pencil rather than the tip. Rotation and tilt can control other aspects of your strokes as well, such as how much grain is shown and how opaque the stroke is. Here's another tip. Try to find art software that is more geared toward fine artists such as Corel Painter, Rebel, or Krita. 
These applications have tools that mimic traditional media, whereas many other applications have flatter, less organic looking brushes that are only useful for simple illustration and coloring. For example, in a proper art application, wet media may drip, surface textures may affect how dry media applies to the canvas, and paint may have a thickness that can be built up or scraped away. If you're coming from a traditional art background, you're going to have an easier time knowing which tool to select and which techniques to use if they're based around specific types of media. These tools will not only make your digital artwork look more traditional, but you'll also have the aesthetic of feeling like you're making traditional art. There are even some art applications like Realistic Paint Studio that take traditional emulation to the extreme and offer a visual interface that looks like a desk with paints and brushes on it. In contrast, Something like Photoshop might feel very off-putting to work with because little emphasis is put on the painting and drawing experience. You really have to do a lot of customization to surface the relevant features for painting. When you're working in applications like this, you don't necessarily feel like you're making art. It's more like placing pixels rather than interacting with a medium. The applications that can simulate traditional media are going to make you feel the most at home. Many applications offer free trials, so just spend some time trying them out until you get a feel for which one feels the most comfortable for you. I have a review of digital art software if you're interested. Once you've settled on an art application, it's time to find some brushes that fit your style. Brushes can be one of the most overwhelming aspects of digital art. Traditional art stores have a lot of brushes, but digital art has them beat. Many art applications have hundreds, maybe even thousands of brushes once you start to count custom brushes made by users. It can be difficult to know which brushes to use, which may cause you to waste a lot of time searching for one that works. Even worse, all of these brushes have dozens of properties that can change how the brush looks or performs. There are almost limitless combinations of these properties to choose from. I'll let you in on a little secret. You're never going to use 90% of the brushes out there because they don't fit your style. For instance, if you never create watercolor paintings, then ignore the watercolor brushes. Although maybe in some cases you might want to use them for a different style of painting. But the point is, there is only a small collection of brushes that are going to be appropriate for your style. And if you can find those, it's going to make it much more convenient to paint because you won't have to become sidetracked hunting for brushes. It's just like when you discover traditional brushes or pencils you like. You don't sit down to make traditional art with a thousand brushes. You just have a dozen favorites, maybe not even that. A couple of things you may want to do to your brushes are calibrate your pen pressure so that it does not feel difficult to get the full range of light to heavy expression, and add some stabilization if it feels difficult to draw steadily. Traditional art involves a lot of friction, but that friction is missing when you draw with a slippery pen on a smooth tablet surface. It's friction that allows your hand to be more steady, and stabilization can provide that. Depending on the application you are using, there are various methods for collecting and organizing your favorite brushes. Here you can see that in Corel Painter, I have a lot of control over creating custom palettes for my brushes. What's important is that I can access my brushes with a single click rather than having to hunt through a menu first. I know it looks like I have a lot of brushes here, but I only really use a handful of these on a regular basis. The rest are specialty brushes I may only use on occasion. The priority brushes are located at the top and are the most easily accessible. I would start with just a few brushes and work your way up to this if necessary. Having too few brushes to choose from is worse than having too many. So be sure the application you choose has a good variety of media, brush variants, and brush properties. Once you have selected some brushes that work well for you, you can begin to develop some techniques for working with them. Techniques are as important in digital art as they are in traditional art. There are specific techniques for media like ink, watercolor, oils, pastel, and so on, but there is also the overall technique of working digitally on a computer. I would focus on the latter first, and then start to experiment with specific mediums. There are fundamental techniques you'll need to become familiar with, like working with layers, transformations, masking, file formats, image resolution, and blend modes to fully appreciate what you can do in digital art. Don't expect to learn all this at once, it will take time. Just try to absorb a little at a time. What's important is that you're able to understand how to put something on a digital canvas from beginning to end. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece, just a complete piece of art. The more difficult techniques to learn are those that are specific to a style, genre, or medium. 
When I started making digital art as a career, there weren't very many useful resources that showed techniques, only how to use the software. For instance, I wanted to learn how to paint landscapes digitally, but all I could find were traditional tutorials. I applied what I had learned about traditional art and experimented with painting after painting until I developed the right combination of brushes and techniques to get a result I was satisfied with. And those brushes and techniques are still the basis of my digital art lessons today. There is the opposite problem now, where there are too many digital art techniques available, and it can be difficult to find one that is worth watching. I would recommend both experimenting on your own and watching various tutorials by other artists. The goal here is to get inspired and piece together an illustration process that you're comfortable using. It's important to always be refining your technique. You need to practice often, and you need to make lots of paintings. But what I would focus on is purely practice, not creating content for publication. That's stuff you're going to share publicly yourself. You don't even have to aim for finished paintings. You can always come back to a digital painting later, since it's a file. What's important is that you are gaining experience. Trying to finish every painting you start just creates unnecessary pressure, and your progress may stall because you're obsessing over perfection. Other than electricity and a bit of effort, you aren't wasting anything by abandoning a project for something else. Just let it go. There's also the aspect of trying to come up with ideas for paintings. I wouldn't worry about that too much, and instead just create practice canvases with a bunch of trees, faces, trees with faces, or whatever you're into. It doesn't have to tell a story or have a meaning, it's just practice. Once you become comfortable with your technique, you'll have a workflow you can follow, and you won't be second-guessing your ability to use the software. At this point, if you're at least somewhat happy with your results, you can start creating finished artwork. My final tip is one that can help you maintain your motivation. If you feel like you're struggling to work digitally, keep in mind the benefits. Yes, there are a lot of things that frustrate me about digital art, but I also enjoy that I don't have to purchase paints and canvases, clean up messes, or store physical art. But what really used to give me a lot of anxiety about making art was that traditional art is easily ruined. Digital art allows me to prevent mistakes and experiment without any risk. I also like that digital art technology improves each year. There is always something new to look forward to, as opposed to traditional art which has become stagnant. If you are an early adopter of new digital art tools, you can invent never-before-used techniques. It feels really exciting to be a digital artist, but in traditional art there is little room for innovation. If you keep those benefits in mind, you won't feel so discouraged when you hit an obstacle. That is all for this video. Keep at it, and I'm sure that with time you'll come to a place where you feel as comfortable making digital art as you do traditional art. If you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe and check out some more of my digital art videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.